Okay, this is a continuation of my Rust-Oleum versus Krylon test, uh, specifically for the purposes of painting firearms. And in my case, it was a polymer 80 polycarbonate lower for an AR-15. It's been three days. I said I would wait a week before I posted anything else, but uh, I'm confident that I've waited long enough. The paint's cured. It doesn't need a week cure. It's been out here in the sun, and it's actually been torture tested. I let this set out here during a really nice thunderstorm. This uh, stayed soaked for about 24 hours, and I wanted to show you the results. I've kind of been scratching on it and messing with it. And already, I may have to take the camera off and show you closer, but the, the Rust-Oleum, I can actually just take it right off with my finger. That was just my thumbnail. Nothing special, no gimmicks, no tricks. That's Rust-Oleum. For you Rust-Oleum guys that that all you use is Rust-Oleum. I mean this is a test. This is a Lexan sheet of polycarbonate. That's what Lexan's brand name for polycarbonate. That's what this is. This is the Krylon. Now I came off of an edge with the with the Rust-Oleum. I'm going to come off of an edge with the Krylon. Same thumb, same situation. And I can't scratch it. Let's use my other thumb since it's clean. Ish. Alright, so there's a little bit coming off, but not. That's just off the surface. The Krylon is actually bonded to the polycarbonate. I can't remove it just in, just as a whole like I can. The Krylon, I mean the uh, the Rust-Oleum. The Rust-Oleum comes right off. Let's do it again. And back to the Krylon. And it, I can tell on the surface when I do that, I can't feel my scratch marks. It looks like to me the matte finish of the Krylon is just kind of more uh, being polished by my my fingernail. I can't really remove any of the material. And the, the lines you see, see that I make are probably just a... Uh, and th this is an extreme situation. You're not going to do that to any painted surface. And for those of you guys that are Rust-Oleum guys, or maybe you like the fact that the way your AR looks or your other rifle or shotgun that looks after it gets kind of scratched up, well, I mean, you're going to love Rust-Oleum. You won't have any trouble scratching that. And this is just this is not fusion Krylon. This is just basic Krylon that says it'll work for some plastics. This is just basic Rust-Oleum. And I'm not sure if you can see this right here, but I'm all the way through. Yeah, I'm all the way through to the clear. Let me go get a light and I'll show you. All right, I wanted to show you with this light, nothing special, LED light. And that's me removing the, the Rust-Oleum with my fingernails. It was that easy. And I'm all the way down to the polycarbonate. And you can see there's no bond. There's no bond in any way right here. And this is the Krylon. I've been working on this Krylon. This is just Color Master Krylon. It's not the Fusion. You don't need it with polycarbonate. It's made to sell in regards to specifically just polycarbonate. Because this is bonded with the polycarbonate. I can't take it off. As much as I try, it's not coming off. So, in regards to painting weapons or rifles or AR-15s, if you're a Rust-Oleum guy and you like to like the way your gun looks after it's scratched all to hell in just a couple of uses, well, you need to stick with Rust-Oleum. If you want something that's going to be a little bit more durable, use Krylon. All right, and to give you a quick gun oil test, this is what I use, what I like: rim oil with Teflon. So. And we'll just give it a good squirt. And I'll let this sit on here for a while and we'll come back. I'm not even worried about the about the rust oleum. I'm not gonna use it. But as you can see, Krylon is impervious to the rim oil, and that's what I'll be using. A little different angle here, I think you can see that better. 
It's been on here for about 30 minutes now. Nothing. I think I had a flake on my finger of, of the old stuff I scratched off, but it's uh, it would be turning my fingers black if it was actually dissolving it, but it's not. Okay, so this is the polymer lower that has been painted with the Krylon. And you can see the oil. I mean, I've oiled up my hammers and the springs and, and detents and anything else that, that, that moves and involves friction. Everything's oiled, and I hope this comes through on the camera. It is just slightly shinier than the Rock River Upper. Just very slightly. I can totally live with that. I couldn't live with the sheen that was on it from the factory. But after two light coats of Krylon Flat Black Color Master, it's, it suits me perfectly. It is almost, if not exactly the same sheen as the Magpul CTR Stock and the Rock River A2 Grip. So I'm super pleased with the results. It's going to be tough. It's going to be durable. It's bonded to the polycarbonate. I know based on the test. So there it is. Let me know what you think about this. As a recap, I can scratch the Rust-Oleum right off all the way down through to the polycarbonate. Scratch it right off, no problem. It did not bond in any way. And the Krylon Color Master has bonded to the polycarbonate. Okay, one final look. Polymer 80 lower. Krylon Flat Black Color Master. Guys, thanks for watching this. I hope this little test is worth something to you. Um, you know, I'm sorry if you're a Rust-Oleum guy and you thought you had a good proper paint for the job. Now, it may be fine on an anodized upper. I don't know. I don't care. Most people that are painting their guns paint the whole thing. And that involves painting stocks, grips, um, you know, uh, polycarbonate or polymer foregrips, uh, foregrip pads, angled foregrips. So, for the purposes, for me, it's going to be Krylon and not Rust-Oleum.